Oil prices have suffered a historic collapse since 1991 after Saudi Arabia slashed prices and shocked the market by launching a price war against Russia. U.S. oil prices crashed by over 33 percent to $27.59 a barrel, while Brent crude plunged over 30 percent to $31.54 a barrel. The failure of the Vienna meeting between OPEC and Russia left the oil industry shell-shocked after Moscow refused to cut oil supplies as proposed by OPEC. Saudi Arabia announced massive discounts to its official selling prices for April as it prepares to increase its production to over a million barrels per day. The kingdom currently pumps 9.7 million barrels per day, but has the capacity to ramp up to 12.5 million barrels per day. Oil prices have dived sharply this year as the new coronavirus outbreak has led to diminishing demand for crude. For more on this, we are joined by Dr. Manoj Atakin, independent global oil and energy consultant from London. Thank you for your time. First of all, with the U.S. oil prices plunging a historic 33% and the price war raging, where do you see this headed? Well, this is a repeat of the history in November 2014. Uh, the same story happened and Russia did not agree to cooperate with OPEC and Saudi Arabia and the oil price collapsed in 1915-16. It was uh, like a standoff between uh, OPEC, Saudi Arabia on one side and uh, Russia on the other. Really, uh, the supply and demand uh, of oil in the world is a moving thing all the time. It is changing. Uh, obviously, we all know that because of the uh, uh, coronavirus and the reduction in economic activity, demand has fallen you know, precipitously. So there has been a drastic fall in demand for oil in the world in the last uh, month. Whereas supply cannot be turned on and off that quickly. It has to be agreed. And to uh, balance the supply and demand, uh, the producers have to get together and reduce their production in order to balance and give, give, give enough oil that the world needs, that there's a low demand. And it is this agreement, although they all know that it has to be supply, they have to reduce supply to defend the price, but always says, okay, you do it, that country would do it, OPEC would do it, Saudi Arabia would, redu would uh, reduce its supply and defend the price of oil. And I will try, a producer, and I will try to maximize my production and get the best, highest revenue. But this individual position an opportunistic position, it, 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 it does not work. All producers, uh, President Putin and others, have to put politics aside. Of course, it, it is the balance of politics and real economics and real business. Mr. Takin, oil producing countries' market share race indenting the Gulf economies big time. But do you think it could add an indirect stimulus to the countries importing high price oil to run their economies? Well, the price of oil is falling, and of course, this is a boon and to the oil importers. The net oil importing countries are happy. They would be happy. Even in the United States, of course, the U.S. economy would, uh, is benefiting, as well as countries like India uh, and Pakistan and developing countries in Far East countries, Japan and others, Africa and so on. They are all benefiting. So as to the benefits of the low price, it is good for the importers. But of course, if this whole situation, which is, uh, if it continues and the, re the producers lose uh, revenue badly, then they will not purchase uh, from uh, Europeans and from Japanese and so on either. Uh, if uh, open countries, Middle East countries lose revenue, they wouldn't. So it is a balance that has happened in the history, as I said, 1986, 1998, 1999, 2015-16. And then the end, they all have to come to their senses and realize that they can't push each other and twist each other's arms because they will all suffer anyway.